All right, doing a little carpooling today, and I've got two very special, very important VIPs, ladies and gentlemen, if you will. Very important guests. Right here in the front seat, I've got Betty Leach. She is the Rhode Island American Legion Department Commander, the first female commander of Rhode Island. Yes. There you go. And in the back seat, we have Rachel Garcia from the Rhode Island VFW, veteran of foreign wars for those acronym people at home. And she is the second female state commander. Third so, female. Third. Excuse third. me. Third. I've got wrong information, but we correct it right here. That's why we have it on the record in the car. The third <laughs> female state commander. It's great to have you both here. And uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for your service. Both of you, Air Force veterans. And, uh, you know, go Air Force. Uh, and you are continuing your service through you know the vfw and the american legion and you know betty we'll start with you what is for people who don't know you see the signs everywhere what does the american legion do american legion is there to support our veterans and to ensure that they have access to the benefits that they've earned we have veteran service officers who will help them get that access help them to place their claims uh, we're also there for the families, the families of those who do not come back, as well as the families that do. Uh, we're also there for the um, veterans if they ha have injuries while they're gone to help them um, get the help that they need. And we're always looking for brand new members. There you go. And oh. we need the younger generation, and we can both learn from each other. The younger ones learn from the older, and the older can mentor the youngers. And we all bring something different to the table and we need to learn the experiences of the younger veterans. We'll certainly talk about getting involved, whether you're a civilian or a veteran, we'll talk about that. Uh, Rachel, the veterans, the VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars, what is it that you and your organization does? Is there, is there a difference? I mean, it always feels like everybody's kind of working towards the same goal to take care of those who serve, but talk a little bit, if you could, about what your organization does. Yeah, so similarly to the American Legion, we do, we offer camaraderie for our veterans that have served in overseas conflicts. So the difference between our two organizations is purely eligibility. Okay. So Veterans of Foreign Wars eligibility criteria is a veteran who has served during a war, conflict, or otherwise on foreign soil, or it had hazardous duty pay. But our mission is to provide camaraderie between, between and within those veterans, and then to provide the services and advocacy with our military families, our veterans, and um, the community. So a lot of the, the focus is on community service, community impact, community events, legislative priorities, a lot of similar, um, a, a similar things come out of the VFW, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, as the American Legion. So strictly just for my own edification, if you're in the Air Force or any branch of service and you served in Canada or deployed to Canada, is that considered foreign? I, it has to be during a war, oh, and it okay. has to be during a conflict. So All I don't right, remember so, yeah. the last so, time we had a conflict with Canadians. I think there was yeah. a there was a fight between mooses. Yeah, you know, they were, they were mooses. Heads. Yeah, mooses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll teach that. To I my, don't know if that's true. I'll don't, teach don't. that to my kindergartner nonetheless. <laughs> She'll correct me. So, well, that's incredible. And I mean, it's you have your Rhode Island branch here, and obviously, there's branches all across the country. Betty, what is the, the focus as you're in the leadership here? I mean, it's obviously the general mission, but for you, there must be some areas that specifically are, you know, not just important to you, but you recognize that are imp important for the membership here in Rhode Island. My platform this year is dual. Um, I have a focus on community outreach, and community outreach is internal as well as external. Okay. So I am asking all of my post commanders to reach out to their individual members, uh, just do a buddy check, you know, and as also reach out to your community. So open your doors, let the community come in and see what the Legion is about, see if they're eligible, see how they can help as a civilian to support us. Uh, and the second way is suicide awareness. It's very personal for me. Mental health. It's okay not to say. It's okay to say you're not okay. Uh, and we need to bring the number down. 22 a day is too many. And uh, the American Legion last year created an, an initiative called Be the One, and that means to be the one to ask. Ask if someone is okay. Be the one to listen if you realize someone needs to vent and be the one to reach out if you see someone struggling and they may not be able to to realize it on their own yeah no that's that's great so important that you know 
uh, a, a good mutual friend of all of ours, Eric Wallen with Operation Stand Down Rhode Island. You know, he, especially uh, over the past few years, has talked about the battlefield of the mind. And that's where the battle really, it never stops. You know, in some cases, yeah, you may come home from deployment. You may be, you know, you may have your, your discharge, but that battlefield of the mind, sometimes it, it gets even worse because your mind becomes idle. And, and I mean, you know, that just, that's uh, that's a tough thing. So we'll certainly circle back to that. Uh, Rachel, for your leadership with the VFW here in Rhode Island, uh, you know, what are you seeing with your membership and your uh, group there as you kind of guide and direct that ship or steer yeah. that plane, Air Force, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no uh, we are all branches. <laughs> um, yeah, so the uh, same same sort of mission. I think a lot of service organizations within the veteran um, realm are, are struggling and they're challenged to gain membership specifically because our generations before are coming of age. And so they're not as involved as they once were. So as Betty mentioned earlier, um, it's important for us to get the younger members in. Um, and just to note that Veterans of Foreign Wars, for instance, is not an old person's organization. We encompass and include all folks that have served during conflict or war. And it takes a creative, ideas to make a modern organization. So my mission this year is really to maintain the traditions that have kept our organization um, strong for 124 years and also modernize the approach to our organization so that we are incentivizing folks to join it that are outside of other generations. So community service, to your point earlier about readjustment, it's important to find your tribe again and it's important to find your identity when you've lost that from military service. Some folks have uh, abruptly left military service and have lost a family unit or arriving in a location for whatever reason, utilizing GI Bill at an institution that's outside of the state that you're from or you know you've been away for a while or even if you're home and you've gone on deployment and you've came back and you're just a different person um, it's nice to have folks from all generations all wars all conflicts within the veterans of foreign wars to help support and guide us through that transition because we learn a lot from the generations before us and I honor that I wouldn't be here if it weren't for them I want to bring up two points. First off, you mentioned the younger membership, and, and if nothing, the younger membership helps the older f membership perhaps feel younger because it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a sum of the average age around me, so the younger members, that's great, and, and certainly. Um, Rahm Emanuel, who was the, uh, was the chief of staff of President Obama back in the day, did an interview, and he talked about when he resigned and left. He said it was probably more, it felt more invasive leading, leaving that role than going through, you know, airport security because it literally, you are somebody one day and the next day it, or the next hour, it's like, whoa, who, who am I? What am I? And I almost get that feeling. I know there's, you know, various, you know, forms of ramp down and, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, members and, you know, whether it's in their squadron or their group or platoon, they feel together, but... I imagine there's a bunch of people who almost feel like, oh, you know, it's that shock of like, oh, it's over, it's done. I'm, um, you know, that can really play uh, games and, and, and bad games in, in somebody's mind. Talking about the mental health, how do you over? I guess the right. I don't know if there's a right question to ask, but how do you? start to approach that from a leadership Betty because I know that's one of your platform as far as the the mental health and just trying to bring them up that it's okay not to be okay you have to try and meet the veteran where they are where they're at so which can be difficult at times too because we're all coming from different places but my focus is trying to figure out okay where are the younger folks at what do they like to do how do I utilize that to bring them into us, bring them into the fold, get them to realize that camaraderie is still here and that they can find that with us, either of us. Um, and that's the hardest part, trying to figure out where they're at, trying to figure out what they like, what they want. And so we go to younger um, generations units and we try and, and gauge where they're at. We try it, we ask the questions. What do you like? Where are you at? What's your interest? What do you do when you're not at work? what do you know are you a gamer um are you into classic cars you know what do they want so what sure. can we do to bring them in because the things that we have done in the past 
most likely are not going to interest the ones that are coming up now. Hmm. That's that's interesting, and, and you know, finding those those key things, you know, whether they're into the classic cars or or, or gaming and stuff. I was a big fan of Duck Hunt. That was the only game I was good at, you know, with the little daughter. <laughs> that was it. So, but the games are much more complex, as are uh, what you folks do. Um, Rachel, talk a little bit, if you could, about tapping into the benefits and, you know, really, uh, you know, those after service, you know, in, in your veteran years. How, you know, because uh, is it fair to say a lot of the a lot of people just don't fully u- utilize the services that are there? I mean, is that a safe assumption? And and how do you work with those folks to kind of get them on track? I think I think that's a safe assumption. Um, I know, for instance, there's different populations within our military service and our veteran population from identities perspectives that do not access the services and resources that are offered to them as veterans or service members. So for instance, our Native American population is the least um, accessing these resources and benefits to them. Sure. So what we like what we are trying to do as an organization is, Rhode Island is very, it's a small state with a lot of resources. We actually drove through three quarters of the state just in this little See? bit of time. <laughs> exactly. So I'm from Washington State, so this is very different oh. for me. Um, but as far as resources are concerned, there's a lot of people in our community that have different pocket, t- pocket skill sets and expertise. So we access those. So VA healthcare, um, mental health, uh, VA benefits administration, vet centers, uh, different types of treatment modalities to help kind of this sort of uh, this transition process for service members, whether that be hunting, fishing, um, you know, those types of things to help them get readjusted. But as far as benefits and resources, you don't know the question or you don't know how to ask for an answer if you don't know the question. Yeah. So a lot of the things that we're doing is advocation. So we're speaking to veterans subjectively or one-on-one independently or families, and everybody has a unique experience that they're going through. So it's not one size fits all. So you really have to sit down with a veteran or family member to understand their needs to Betty's point and then address those needs. And our organizations, because we're so familiar with the resources, networking, connections, all of those things, benefits, we have service officers within our organization that help veterans access their VA benefits for compensation, pension, and other things. Um, and those are completely free services. And so we try to do these types of things in order for folks to understand the benefits and resources entitled to them. So an example is when I, when I exited the service, I didn't know I was a veteran because I thought you had to retire from the military. Okay. So for five years, I didn't access any services or benefits because I thought that was it. I was done like what you said earlier. I had no idea. It took somebody at an institution of higher learning that was in the veteran space to tell me that I had access to VA healthcare, hmm. which was a game changer for me. And I could imagine that that would be a game changer for a lot of folks as well. It sounds like there's there's so many things out there that are available, but you know, unless they're having the conversation, and this would be a good time if you're watching this, you know, perhaps you're not a veteran, you're a civilian, a lowly civilian just like me, uh, a loser. No, uh, but the ninety nine percent of the population are losers, and. Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> <I>? <laughs> That was good. I was proud that was of that. good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but you know, share this episode with that person because they may just they just may not know, and they may feel like they're burdening somebody to ask, and it's not a burden. Literally, this is why you do what you do. It's so important. So, talk to uh, Betty. We'll start with you. How can people, whether they're civilian or veteran, get involved with the American Legion because I know there's a myriad of ways there's certain things are exclusive obviously for veterans but how can a person get involved and help you or be helped and serviced by your organization well our veterans obviously getting involved with the Legion or the VFW come in get involved see what what's your passion where in the in the organization would your um, continue to service be the most impactful. Uh, if it's impactful, if it's if it's a passion of yours, you're you're going to be more involved, and it'll have a more bigger impact on other people. Um, civilians, civilians are also military families. So a spouse, a child, 
a parent, they can also get involved uh, in being members of the Legion through the Auxiliary or the Sons of the American Legion. Um, so the whole, it's a whole family event. We don't want just the veteran to come in. We want the whole family. And civilians that may not have a connection can also help us through different events that we have that we open the doors to the community. Um, we always welcome volunteers. We always welcome donations. Uh, we do poppies twice a year. You know, giving a donation to get a poppy is huge. And uh, the money that we collect for poppies all stays in Rhode Island to help Rhode Island veterans. Rachel, I know she kind of covered a, a lot of the similar thing, but specifically when it comes to you know the VFW, uh, how should people be looking for ways to support you folks? Yeah, same thing that Betty just said. Involvement is important. We are struggling with our staff and bodies just as much as any other organization when we do our community service. Everything we do is to give back to our community and to serve our veterans and military families. So all donations are going towards those efforts in some capacity or another. I would say for veterans, if you are unsure of whether or not you are eligible for the VFW, contact our VFW organization in the state. Um, VFW is a department that has many, many posts that are under it. Each post is different depending on who's in charge of that post, what's going on, if they have enough members to support action items or what have you. If the VFW is something in your brain that you're thinking, this isn't for me because of all of these stereotypes, smoky bar, you know, all of these types of things, I'm here to tell you that the VFW is for you. And the only way for us to create change and to modernize and to expand our organization is for folks to come in and be a part of that. Because everybody who is a member of our organization has a vote and a voice. Um, and the other thing about civilians is that we have an auxiliary, uh, American Legion has an auxiliary as well, and they have a membership. So that helps our organization out if anybody who is eligible for the auxiliary portion who never, who hadn't served in the military um, could help us out in our efforts for volunteers or, um, you know, planning. We appreciate the passion, the drive, the expertise and the skill set from each individual. So bring that to the forefront. Um, and what we've been doing recently is our youth uh, engagement. So high school students, middle school students looking for community service hours at their school can contact our VFW and the American Legion to access some community events in your area. If you've contacted a post and they never reached back out to you, that is a common, common thing that I hear. Please contact the Department of VFW Rhode Island and we will get you connected with a post that is viable, that is thriving, and that's doing good work. If you want to help out in a post, contact the department. Um, I just want everybody to have an opportunity to make change where they see that they could. Well, talking about making a change where you can, uh, I think that could both be applied to both you, Betty, and you, Rachel, because uh, without you both in your respective organizations, uh, you know, it's it, it really would be very difficult for so many people. So I thank you for all the hard work and the countless hours, the phone calls, the emails and, and everything else. And, you know, it's it, it's certainly very much appreciated uh, in our community and across the country for those who serve in other parts and other states and everything. Although, Rachel, I am glad to hear that you joined the greatest state, Rhode Island. You yeah. know, the, you know the, 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 we're small, but, you know, we're, we're nice. You're I mean, mighty. Small we're, but mighty. Small but mighty. Now, Rachel, I, I will ask you this question. This may not be military approved, but have you had a Dell's? Yes. All right. Did you put a straw in it? No, because I was told to eat it with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze and shake the cup. That's what, that's what Rhode Islanders said. That's, that's I was like, right. okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that, and I don't have to drop you off just randomly here in Warwick. I'll bring you back to your, uh, your your place there. So thank you all for joining. Folks, if you want to learn more, be sure to hit up the links below and in the comments. Please share this episode, and by all means, if you have the ability to, go support the American Legion, the Veteran of Foreign War, uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars, these great organizations that are really making an impact in our community. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you.